Hello everyone, William with Alliance. On today's Tech Tuesday, we're going to review how to check the nitrogen charge in your accumulator bottle on your concrete pump. So Alliance has this uh, nitrogen charge kit, so we have one for our shop here. Um, looks like so. <clears throat> has a charging head. This is what's uh, used to check the pressure and then to fill it or release pressure. So, and then you also get a hose. Uh, this hose is already attached to the adapter that goes onto the bottle. And then there's also some other um, heads for different types of bottles. Today I have the, already the HIDAC uh, accumulator uh, adapter on here. So first thing I'm going to do is going to remove this cap on the top of the nitrogen bottle. There's also a plastic cap that is over top of here. Uh, I take that off and put it to the side. So there's a little Schrader valve in here and there's an O-ring here. You want to make sure that O-ring is in there because it needs to seal inside of here. To, to seal the pressure. So what we're going to do is make sure that's all clean and then we're going to thread this on to the top. So you can just go hand tight like so. So what I want to do is make sure there's a, a bleed valve here on the side. I want to make sure that is fully uh, screwed in so it's not going to leak any nitrogen out of there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this in. There's a, a little um, bolt or a little threaded rod in there. It's going to push down and it's going to push down on the Schrader valve. You can see the pressure is now coming up. You don't want to keep screwing because you could damage the Schrader valve if you go too far. So this uh, bottle is set at about 80 bar. It's a little bit low. So what we can do is we can top that up. So what I have here is the charging um, hose. So what I actually do first is I'll back the, the pressure off or the, the screw out and I'll let the pressure off. Always make sure you're wearing eye protection for this job. And I screw the hose onto the nitrogen tank. So you want to make sure your tank, when you get it from your uh, gas store, is above about about above 14 or 1500 psi because you're going to need uh, that pressure to fill this here. So you can see our gauge. Uh, we're going to be going to about I just go about uh, 90 bar or just above 90 bar. So that's close to uh, 1500 psi. So we want to be there. So Check that for tightness. Check this. So now we're good. So when you fill the nitrogen through the hose, the nitrogen is actually going to push through the uh, Schrader valve um, and uh, fill the bottle. So we, what I do is I release the pressure like I did here. I'm going to purge the line of on any air, so like so. Then close the bleeder. Then I can start. Uh, I can screw this down to show my pressure again. So now I show my pressure, pressure's coming up. And then what I can do is I'm gonna roll the bottle a little bit closer just to see here. So what I wanna do is top this up. So it goes 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. So we wanna charge this to about 90, but I bring it just above 90 so to get uh, about 95 bar to get a 90 bar charge in here. So I can bring it up and go over. So there I'm just above not about 95. So one little bit more because it'll settle out. The gauge is liquid filled so it reacts slowly uh, and will settle over time. So that we're showing pretty close to 90. So I'm happy with that. So I'll back this out. The pressure will not drop. You'll see that that pressure is still staying there but the, sh uh, the Schrader valve has been released and what I can do now is release this bleed screw and it's releasing the pressure in the hose and in this head. Once you're done that, you can uh, remove the head. So I'll remove this, like so. It'll be a, there we go. So now this bottle is charged up to 90 bar and ready for use. If you ever need to check that, you can run through the same procedure like we showed. You don't actually have to have the hose on like we did there. Um, what I do also is I either apply a little bit of an anti-seize on these threads and on the threads where the cap are so that if moisture gets in there it doesn't corrode and seize this. So add a little bit of anti-seize on there or grease and then you, if you ever have to do maintenance on here it will be easy to access. If you have any questions on the charging kit or how it works or what to get for nitrogen or have any questions about rebuilding accumulator bottles please give us a call. In case you're wondering what the purpose of the accumulator is, uh, it is a, a charge of um, nitrogen. So that nitrogen charge will, it acts like uh, a, uh, instead of pushing something, you're punching something. something. And what you're doing is you're uh, storing uh, a, a fluid 
uh, hydraulic oil. When you pressurize your hydraulic system, your accumulator pressure comes up, so oil fills into this, which then takes and doubles the pressure of the nitrogen because you're compressing it with the oil. So you're filling the oil, so you have a stored reservoir of oil, which is gonna give you that push to shift over your S-tube versus just your pump, pumping oil to shift your S-tube slowly. So this is what actually causes the S-tube to rock over quickly. So if you have a low charge, you'll have a slow shift. If you have uh, a normal shift, um, this will be working properly and your hydraulic pressure won't have to drop all right to zero and then have to rebuild fully because you have a little bit of stored oil still in the reservoir. Um, you can always think about an accumulator like a balloon. The harder you push your finger into the balloon, the more it's going to want to push back on you. So you're taking that um, air in a balloon or nitrogen in a bottle and and putting a force against it which is wanting to escape that bottle. So if you guys have any more questions on nitrogen or bottles, accumulators, let us know.